Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the implicit variables in SFC, which sometimes make programming uh, much easier than creating the actions and uh, transitions between different steps and so on and so forth. So for each step and action in the SFC environment, we have some implicit variables, uh, which we can refer to them by placing the name of the step or the name of the action, then that, and then the name of the implicit variable. So those are already available for us. We can simply just refer to them and use them in the programming. I will show you how to do it within an example uh, later on. So here we have two kinds of variables. One is called the, is shown by x for this step, and it determines the current activation status. So if step name that x is true, it means that the the action the step is being executed within the current cycle. We have another implicit variable as well, which is step name dot underline x, and this shows the activation status for the next cycle. Okay, so if uh, step name dot underline x is true and step name dot x is false, it means that the step is not being executed in the current cycle, but it will be executed in the next program cycle. Uh, another, uh, okay, you don't see it here, but we have the step name dot t. Maybe it was in the previous slide. Let me shape it. No, maybe I, I just have missed it. But we have step name dot t. With step name dot t, we determine the amount of the time that the execution of the program have, has been inside the step. So whenever the execution enters one step, step name that t starts from zero and it, it increases as the time goes on. And by that we can determine how much time we have spent inside one step. That's something that we will see in the example as well. We have uh, action name that x uh, for the actions as well. I will not talk about them in this uh, video. Maybe later in some other video I will uh, discuss about them as well. Okay, so now let's go to the canvases. Here uh, you see one project that I already have implemented within with the SFC. We have the visualization for that as well. So it's uh, done in one of the videos. We have an intersection here, east to west and north to south, and we have the traffic lights placed here. You can refer to the video, and over there you, you can see that we have created uh, these actions. So for each one of the steps here, we have the green one uh, active action, green one entry action, and green one exit action. The same for all of them. And inside each one of them, I had put one on delay timer. And with, uh, with the undelay timer, I was checking the transition. So the green one step was active for five seconds, then yellow one was active for three seconds, and red one was active for eight seconds. And similar story here for the other direction. Over there, you can see how to create the branch, how to place the steps, and how to create the actions for each step. But now I want to modify this and make it simpler using the implicit variables that we have uh, for each step. You, you will see that I will not need any of these uh, variables actually. None of the Boolean variables or, or the undelay timers. So I can already start by commenting them. And this is the way in which you can uh, comment each line separately. Okay, so we, we have nothing here. Uh, what else? I need to remove the actions. So if I uh, right click on the action, here you see how to insert the actions. Insert uh, add entry action and exit action, insert step transition, and so on and so forth. But to remove any action, you can just select that action and press the delete button in the keyboard. That's what I do here. So 
So removing this entry and exit actions is easy to remove the uh, the active action. It's a little bit tricky because if you select and press the direct, uh, you will miss the step, the entire step. Uh, instead, maybe we can maximize. And let's see if it's possible to select the. Uh, okay, so let, let me figure out how, how can we actually uh, delete it from here graphically. Or maybe in the properties we can go there and then from here. It might be easy. So let's go back to 100%. And for each step, you can click. So you can select a step and here in the step active you can just press the delete and remove the action. Okay, for that one for this one I or Okay, whatever. We don't have any step active actions anymore. And here I'm going to change the transition uh, conditions. Instead of referring to the underlay timers, I will refer to the name of the action, so the name of the step, so extreme one, that key will provide me the amount of time that we have been inside the green one. Step, if it's bigger than five seconds, then we will transit to the next step. Here I will use red to the t bigger than eight seconds, and I will do the same thing for the for the other steps as well. I will do it and come back. All right. So here I have changed all the transitions to step name that t bigger than a given amount of time, as you can see here. And for the last one, I have changed it to the red one that t bigger than eight seconds, and yellow two that t bigger than three seconds. So now we don't need any of these uh, actions here. We can just remove them from the project. Uh, now let's go to the visualization. In the visualization, previously we were referring to a variable name. Now instead we can refer to the uh, to the step. Uh, okay, let's see. Where are our... Okay, so now you don't see them actually because we don't have uh, any variable declared in our program. Yeah? So instead what we can do is to refer to the name of the step in the PSC underline PRG, so like green one, and yeah, and refer to the... Can start by typing green one, but here I can determine the x. So if the step green one, step green one is uh, active, I would like to turn on the green light for that direction, and so on and so forth. So all of them. Yeah? Uh, this was actually missing. I need to change it to. Uh, red one that x because it's a red file thing. Red one that x. This one should be yellow one that x, and this one should be green one that x. For yellow, it's yellow one, yellow zero one, because we had yellow zero one as a variable. I will do all the changes for all, all the other uh, pilot terms and then come back. Uh, okay, so I did all the changes to the visualization. Here you can refer to uh, each one of pilot terms. You, you see that it's PSC underline PRG. Don't read to the name of this, that x, the name of the implicit variable. And here we have the transitions based on the step name that t, the amount of time that we have been inside. And I can just log in and run it. 
and here in the visualization you can see you can see it in the runtime so the yellow light is turned on in one direction now the green and red in different directions and so on and so forth and here you can see which step is active the amount of time that we have been inside the step is also shown here and then the transition happens based on that amount of time so you can see that you can refer to the implicit variables of the steps and later on you will see how to refer to the implicit variables of the actions and this sometimes makes the programming easier because if you compare whatever we have here with, with the previous project in which we had a lot of actions and uh, we, we were using the underlay timers and uh, creating to, to create the time delays and using them here in the transitions uh, and we had a lot of variables uh, six variables to refer to them actually six boolean variables to refer to them in, in the visualization that this one is much simpler and it helps you to uh, develop simpler calls let's say which is also uh, more easy to understand as well uh, okay so this is how to use the implicit variables in the sfc i hope this will help you i i also hope that you you would like the video you will like the video and you will share it with some other people because it might be useful for them as well. Thanks you for watching and see you next time.